In today's episode of Tristan Take Video, six skills that pro cyclists know that you can learn too to improve your performance on the bike, how quick you can ride, how well you can recover afterwards, and how much you enjoy the sport. This video follows on from a previous video I made a few weeks ago that you can see up here. But in this video, we're gonna talk about some more advanced techniques to take your cycling to the next level. Of course, with these more advanced techniques comes more potential for danger. If you find some of the things in this video too technical or too difficult, please don't attempt them. But if you are interested in learning some skills to take your cycling to the next level, stay with me, let's get into it. This is six skills that pro cyclists know that you can learn too. Okay, now I'm gonna start with one of the more basic ones, and this is actually a skill that a lot of pro cyclists don't know, but it is a skill that most cyclists who ride 25 to 30,000 Ks per year will know. And that's how to change a tube in under two minutes. Knowing how to change a tube in under a couple of minutes is super important if you're riding with a fast group of riders, because most people aren't gonna to wanna to hang around and wait for someone who's got a flat to faff while they figure out how to do it. It's important to practice changing your tube before you're out on the road in that situation and under pressure. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to explain some of the ways that you can change a tube in under a couple of minutes successfully. When you get a flat and you bring your bike to a complete stop, the first thing to do is check the outside of the tire. Make sure you can't see any glass or flint or bits of metal that might be stabbing all the way through the tire and causing that flat. Remove the bottles out of your bike and flip your bike upside down, standing it on the handlebars and the saddle. However, if it's windy, don't do this because your bike might blow over. Lie the bike on its side with the drive side up so that the derailleur is not pressing it against the ground. Remove your wheel from the frame and then grab your tire lever and starting on the opposite side of the rim to the valve, start removing one side of the tire. Once you remove that one side of the tire, take out the tube and check the entire inside of the tire all the way around to ensure that there's nothing still poking through that might cause a puncture on the next tube that you put in. Grab out your spare tube and semi-inflate it using your mouth. This is just to give the tube a little bit of shape and it's gonna help it stay inside the tire as you're fitting it. Always start with the valve when you're fitting the tube inside the tire. And then once you've fitted the tube all the way around, start with the tire at the same point. You wanna start reseating the tire from from the valve side because that's the most difficult part of the tire to get onto the rim. So start with the valve and then work your way around using your thumbs and once you've reached the final part of the tire, the most difficult part to get on, press the tire into the center of the rim all the way around the wheel and then you'll find you've got that little bit more space to roll the final part of the tire on. From there you can check all the way around the rim to make sure that there's no tube poking out underneath the tire anywhere and the tube is properly seated inside the tire. Once you've finished the entire installation process you can whack your wheel back on your bike make sure that you put it in the same gear if it was a rear wheel puncture and you're back on the road in no time at all I'm now actually going to do the entire process in under two minutes so you can see that it can actually be done If you've ever seen pro cyclists rolling in a bunch, whether in training or in racing, you'll see that they're amazingly comfortable with riding close together. This is something that always looks very impressive and it is a skill that you guys can learn without needing to be a pro cyclist. Riding close together is going to mean that you can talk at a regular volume, you can feel more comfortable with the people around you, and when you are in a race or a fast swapping off situation like I'm gonna discuss in the next point, you'll actually end up being a safer cyclist for having this skill. If you are gonna practice this with your mates, make sure that everyone's on board with it, but then go from there. Start on flat, straight pieces of road where you can practice riding close to the person next to you, and you'll find that in time you actually become really comfortable with it. For all the riding that I've done with pro cyclists, one of the things that continually impresses me is how comfortable and how smooth they are pedaling at high speeds or descending very close to the people around them. As I keep saying, this does take lots of practice, but it's a skill that once you have, you won't forget. By riding close together, you'll be more cohesive as a group, you'll come home without a hoarse voice, and you'll feel like you're a much more professional cyclist in general. 
Okay, so moving on to a next point. Now, this is a skill that I think every cyclist of any level, particularly if you're training and racing, should know. It's the fastest way to roll in a group, and that is rolling in a pace line. Now, a pace line or a chain gang, through and off, rolling turns, whatever you want to call it, it's the fastest way to move along in a group of cyclists as long as everybody has the same idea. You will have seen this done in virtually every single bike race that's been televised, and that is that you have two lines of riders, one of them moving forwards and one of them moving backwards. You follow the rider in front of you to the front of the group, then you take your turn on the front, moving across and giving them a break. You move towards the back and then you slot in and start the process again. One of the most important things with pace lining like this is to keep the effort very steady throughout. That means no major spikes and no major braking. Smoothness is the aim of the game here and one of the best things you can do for this is look down at your speed and see what speed the group is going and then try and maintain that same speed speed as you get to the front. Now obviously that's going to change whether you're going uphills or downhills, but in general the best thing you can do is feel the speed of the bunch and feel the effort and try and maintain that consistently throughout the pace line. As you move towards the front of the group and you start taking more wind, keep your power steady and then as you get to the front don't spike it up because you don't actually need to increase the speed, you just need to keep the group at the same speed which is just going to require that little bit more effort and then you can roll across once you get a bike length in front of the rider next to you and start dropping back after that. When you are dropping back, make sure to keep some power on the pedals so that the bike keeps moving forward. You're not wanting to do a big sprint to the front and then get off the pedals and completely start drifting backwards. You want to move to the front of the group. You want to gently move it across. You want to start gently moving backwards and be slotted back in at the same speed that the group is moving again. A couple of other little skills to know when you're pace lining like this is when you get towards the back and you're going to move across, do let the rider next to you know that they are now the last rider in the group by saying to them yep or yes jump in or anything you like to let them know that they're last that means they can move across and keep the bunch moving stay in communication with each other and so you always keep the chain moving nice and smoothly and consistently and you'll find that the speed stays the same the entire time if you do find the pace is too hot for you and you need to jump out let someone know when you get to the back of the group say yep I'm dropping off and just sit up and drop off the back and let the next rider know that they can slot in it's important not to try and stay in the pace line beyond your physical capability because as your heart rate goes higher and higher, you'll find that your bike handling and your concentration starts to lapse. I say it a lot and I'm going to say it again. Cycling is a dangerous sport and this is definitely a dangerous activity to do. If doing this is too much of a risk for you, don't get involved. Wait until you've improved other areas of your cycling ability like how to ride close with the people around you and how to maintain a consistent pace throughout a ride and then go from there. Now one skill that all pro cyclists have and all amateur cyclists can learn is that different days on the bike are designed for different things. That's understanding that not every day on the bike needs to be a super hard day in order to improve and along with that learning that recovery days are equally as important for your progression as a cyclist as difficult days are. If you want to see some training sessions that I recommend to improve your cycling, have a look at this video that I created up here. But the main premise of that video is to learn how to train properly for the appropriate number of days per Per week and give yourself the right amount of recovery days as well to improve your fitness gains. It's important to understand that you can improve rapidly on two hard days per week and two entire days off the bike per week as well. Pro cyclists aren't actually out there doing massive days every single day. Yes, they train harder than you or I, but that's because over time their body has learned to handle that training load. For people who are just getting into training, start with two hard days a week, whether that be one on the weekend and one during the week, or a couple on the weekend and maybe one at additional one during the week and over time you'll find that your body starts to handle a progressive training load more and more. The reason it's important to have multiple easy days every week is to do each session as fresh as you possibly can. This way you'll avoid injury, you'll train to your maximum ability and you'll find that your body recovers better afterwards. Being massively fatigued is not going to make you a better cyclist and if you are watching this video I can almost guarantee that you're not being paid to ride a bike. For that reason you're better off being more fresh and training harder when you are training than being more fatigued and thinking that by digging yourself a massive hole you're going to end up stronger. One thing I do want to say along with this is that if you do have any specific goals in terms of climbing or sprinting or time trialing, it's important to practice those specific skills and understand that going out with a purpose to practice those skills is going to rapidly improve them. The worst thing you can do for your sprint is to go out and climb long draggy climbs and the worst thing you can do for your climbing is to only practice high intensity sprints. By training with the purpose of your specific goal, 
whether it be to improve your sprint, your climbing, or your time trialing, you'll find that you not only improve that skill more quickly, but you'll be better at it as a final result as well. Okay, now I've banged on a bunch about this in previous episodes and I am gonna say it again. Fueling is a skill that all pro cyclists understand and every cyclist, no matter whether you're just starting out in the sport or you're an extremely high level rider needs to know. Not only could every cyclist be eating more while on the bike, but every cyclist also goes better by eating more on the bike. Whether you're eating real food while out on the bike like sandwiches or rice cakes or things that you've made at home, you're eating muesli bars from the supermarket, you're eating gels or you've got carbohydrate powder in your bottles, by eating carbs during a ride, you're gonna find your legs operate better, your mind operates better, and your strength on the bike lasts all the way through every one of the rides that you do. Now, being a YouTuber, there is an unfortunate fact that no matter what I say here, people are gonna jump in the comments and tell me that I'm wrong. But what I will say is that high carb foods before your ride and during your ride are gonna make you a better cyclist, and high protein foods along with high carb foods afterwards are gonna help your recovery. By eating proper on the bike, for example, a minimum of 30 to 40 grams per hour on easy days, all the way up to say 100 grams of carbs per hour on difficult days of training, you'll find that you feel better on the bike and you actually also recover better afterwards as well. It's really important that the harder your training gets, the more you eat. When you get home from all rides, but especially difficult rides, make sure to eat as quick as you possibly can to get that recovery process started as soon as it can possibly be started. One of the other things that this is a skill that pro cyclists have and most other cyclists have not quite learnt yet is because pro cyclists have a lot of time to practice training their gut to absorb large amounts of calories. For most sedentary people, you couldn't whack them on a bike and ask them to eat 100 grams of carbs per hour and have their body accept that. It does take time to train your gut to take on that load of carbohydrates. So make sure that you do practice this each and every ride rather than just practicing it on the hard days of training or when you rock up to a race and be like, oh, I need to eat high carbs because I'm going hard today. If you are interested in learning more about nutrition on the bike. You can do simple steps like downloading apps like Eat My Ride that can help you planning your pre-ride, your in-ride, and your post-ride fueling. But if you do want to take it to the next level, I do recommend speaking with a sports dietitian or a sports scientist or even just a regular nutritionist about what to eat while you're exercising. Most pro cyclists have access to these kinds of people in their network. And by looking them up yourself, you're going to find you understand nutrition in a more wholesome and complete way and you'll end up as a better cyclist for doing so. Okay, now all of that leads me up to point number six, the final point for this video, and this is that pro cyclists understand the importance of balancing every aspect of their life, at least the best ones do. The three main points I'm talking about here are sleeping, eating and drinking, and stress. Now balancing all of these things is not only a difficult task for everyone to do, but it varies depending from individual to individual. While I like to drink alcohol, I have found that by cutting out my alcohol consumption and bringing it down to simply a one or two two day a week activity, I've ended up as a better cyclist. By focusing on going to bed at a more regular and consistent time, I found that my training is actually better. And in general, by reducing the stress in my life, I found that I can go deeper on the bike and I'm more concentrated when I do so. And although there are videos out there, self-help gurus, articles abound about how you can become a beast on the bike with this one small tip, trick, or hack, there is no substitute for seeing the bigger picture, working hard, and understanding that big goals take big amounts of time to achieve. Cycling is such a massive journey and becoming the best cyclist you can be is not something that can be achieved overnight. Funnily enough, you'll never actually quite understand when you're at your peak cycling fitness. So the best thing you can do is keep a bigger picture in mind, keep the balance in your life nice and steady, understand that small setbacks don't mean that your entire journey is ruined and equally it's just as important to enjoy those big milestones when you hit them. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, make sure to whack a big like on it. Give the channel a subscribe if you are new here and I'll see you guys in another episode of Tristan Take Video very soon. Thanks guys, adieu.